This anime begins with an earthquake that struck an entire town, causing fear among the people. This earthquake caused landslides in various areas, and a hill gradually collapsed. In the labyrinthine city of Nagan, we meet Yuno the Distant Claw. She attended an academy for special classes, where the teacher explained about spoken arts. These techniques can alter various natural phenomena through the inherent will of words, regardless of the speaker's race or linguistic system. Spoken arts can only be used in the human world and do not act the same in the world of the visitors. While the class was in session, Yuno noticed a girl, who caught her looking and Yuno quickly looked away. After class, the girl approached Yuno, asking if she was busy. Yuno said no and asked what she needed. The girl requested Yuno to teach her about the impelling arts, surprising Yuno. The girl expressed her confidence in Yuno as her teacher in these arts. Despite Yuno's hesitation and attempt to explain her modest skills, the girl insisted on learning from her. The story reveals that Nagan, a city of students and explorers, was built around the center of the great labyrinth of Kiazuna, home of the self-proclaimed Demon King. The scene shifts to a group of adventurers fighting a robot. They combine their attacks and teamwork to penetrate the robot's circuits, defeating it. They were surprised that the robot had reached the city, suspecting it followed a bandit. The reactivated robot was sealed by the adventurers. Meanwhile, Yuno was teaching the girl how to use the impelling arts. They practiced on a stone, reciting the spell that made it levitate. Over time, Yuno grew fond of the girl, and they aspired to a future together as adventurers, especially after the Demon King's defeat. Yuno's goal was to explore the labyrinth and retrieve lost relics from the conflict with the Demon King. One day, while walking through the town, Yuno and her friend were affected by an earthquake that caused citywide collapses, injuring and killing many. A strange light appeared before Yuno, the same robot from earlier, which killed the girl before her eyes. Yuno, traumatized, fled when the robot tried to kill her but was pursued. The group of monsters ambushed her from the rubble. Desperate, Yuno escaped to the outskirts, witnessing the city engulfed in flames. Yuno, traumatized and kneeling, lamented that she should have died instead of her companion. The legitimate demon king was dead, yet conflicts continued. Hearing a noise, Yuno turned to see a robot, quickly using her spoken arts to destroy it with a single magical attack. Wondering why the robot died so easily, she examined the destroyed machine and blamed herself for her companion's death, realizing she could have saved her. More robots appeared to ambush Yuno, who, Overwhelmed with anger and grief, used her spoken arts to eliminate each wave. However, she eventually gave up, wanting to die under the burden of her friend's death. Suddenly, a sword sliced one robot in half, followed by the others. Confused, Yuno sensed a presence and saw a boy sitting nearby, who asked if she liked dying. He then claimed that humans will have fun when everything disappears, each free to do as they wish. Noticing the perfect cuts on the robots, Yuno questioned the boy's identity and learned he was a visitor. He then descended to the city, defeating every robot. Yuno discovered that robots, known as golems, also exist in the visitor's world. The boy effortlessly defeated the golems with his sword, claiming none could rival it. He then asked Yuno for food, but she begged him to leave, warning that even if he was strong, the city was doomed. The boy asked Yuno to calm down and inquired why the city was doomed. Yuno, annoyed, insulted him, calling him blind, and then pointed to the largest golem in the city. She asked the boy, Saojiru Yajuo, if he could kill the giant golem with just his sword. Saojiru deduced from the golem's size that the city's labyrinth was actually a destruction machine, possibly built to defeat the legitimate demon king. As a golem tried to attack Yuno from behind, Saojiru intervened, knocking down and slicing the machine. He mentioned he could survive on herbs and grass, as he hadn't even had breakfast. Yuno mentioned having some snacks, though not very tasty. Saojiru proposed a deal, food from Yuno in exchange for dealing with the giant golem. Yuno was skeptical and asked his name. He introduced himself as Saojiru Yajuu, of the Yajuu Shinkage Ryu School, the last Yajuu from Earth. Yuno was surprised to encounter a visitor from such a distant land in the human world, signaling an ominous beginning. Saojiru asked Yuno about her ability to use spoken arts. Yuno explained that, according to the academy, visitors couldn't use this power due to language differences, while humans could communicate using spoken arts. Saojiru, acknowledging this, decided to stick with his sword and prepared to face the giant golem. Despite Yuno's warnings about the risk of death, Saojiru stated that not fighting wasn't an option, as the machine would destroy other human lands if left unchecked. Saojiru quickly engaged the horde of machines targeting him, fighting his way to the giant golem. The golem's powerful ground strike caused an earthquake, startling Yuno. She was amazed by Saojiru's speed, comparable to sound, as he climbed the robot. 
The golem deployed turrets that fired arrows, but Saojiru skillfully blocked them. As he descended, more robots tried to ambush him, but Saojiru used them to his advantage, propelling himself up the golem's body. Yuna was shocked to see the golem using human-like arts, particularly thermal arts, firing a powerful beam that destroyed the city. Saojiru dodged the beam and decapitated the golem, which remained active and tried to crush him. The narrative then explains the eighth year of the Iroku era, when Munayoshi Yajuo, founder of Yajuo Shinkage Ryu, defeated a student of the great swordsman Kami Azumi Nabatsuna using Mutotori, a technique to dodge, disarm, and use the opponent's momentum against them. Saojiru applied Mutotori against the golem, dodging its attack, cutting off its hand, and using the hand's momentum to damage the golem itself. The impact exposed and damaged the golem's core, causing it to fall defeated. Saojiru slid down the robot, landing unharmed. With the tallest golem defeated, the rest of the machines in the city shut down. You know, witnessing this, couldn't believe a visitor defeated the golem and wondered why the Great Labyrinth was activated, suspecting Saojiru but then dismissing the thought. Saojiru rejoined Yuno, remarking that fighting the golem was more fun than defeating an M1, which he explained was a type of tank. Yuno asked how he found the machine's weak point, but Saojiru didn't answer and left. Yuno quickly stopped Saojiru to give him the snack as part of their earlier agreement. Saojiru took the food and thanked Yuno, mentioning that it was better than insects and grass. Yuno couldn't stop watching Saojiru and reflected on her disdain for strong people, as they had reduced her life to something insignificant. She considered herself an heir in a world where even tragedies are trampled, with no rights of her own. Realizing she had to hold on and move forward, Yuno took one last look at the burning city. Saojiru bid farewell, saying he was off to find something more fun. Yuno advised him to go to Orisha, the largest country in the world. Surprised, Saojiru asked if there were strong people there, to which Yuno affirmed, exciting him. Yuno explained that in Orisha, there was something called the Council of Orisha, a group that summoned heroes from around the world for a significant plan. She believed that in Orisha, someone strong enough to kill Saojiru existed, possibly even several people. Yuno mentioned various formidable individuals, including Roskle the Absolute, the second general of Orisha, Turoa the Terrible from the White Mountains, Krafnir the Gate of Truth, rumored to have mastered a fifth system of spoken arts, and mysterious figures like Kazuki the Black Tone and Luknoka the Winter, unseen by humans or visitors. Inwardly, Yuno was curious about Saojiru's identity and power, hoping to uncover the secrets of the distant world. After some thought, she offered to accompany and guide Saojiru as a student of Nagan, ensuring they wouldn't arouse suspicion in Orisha. Saojiru, sensing her hidden agenda, was excited and thanked her for the guidance. He told her that by accompanying him, she was now free to do as she wished. Looking at the burning city again, Yuno, now without a home or purpose, felt free to embark on something reckless. Saojiru asked for her name, and she introduced herself as the Distant Claw. Hearing her title, Saojiru revealed his own known as the Willow Blade. If you've reached this part of the video, comment the word hero in the comments. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this anime.